Obviously, the, um, the cycling uh, across the coast is Category 5, directly over the Pardu Roadhouse. And we have had early reports um, from people on site there that there is extensive damage. It's unconfirmed by DFES yet, but we will have a helicopter in the air as soon as it's safe to head out there and uh, inspect that a bit closer. What else have you heard on the ground with other areas that have been affected? Well, uh, it's good to report that Port Headland and Bijadanga um, escaped the brunt of the cyclone um, at this stage overnight. We've actually received no calls for assistance. So it appears that the, the larger populated areas have uh, really escaped the damage. Um, once we um, can get crews onto the ground, the helicopters in the air, once it's safe, we will move along the coast just to check to see roads and other critical infrastructure, um, just to see the, um, the, the brunt of the impact of the Cat 5. And what warnings are still in place and when do you expect that some of those could be lifted? Yeah, we still have a red alert uh, in place and that um, captures most of those coastal areas around Pardu, Port Headland and through to Telfer. Uh, we have crews on the ground, uh, particularly around South Headland, State Emergency Service volunteers, our urban search and rescue crews and police who are actually inspecting uh, those areas of South Headland. And we're hoping to at least reduce some of the, uh, the red alert areas there. Um, but like I mentioned, crews will need to assess damage uh, closer. And we just really encourage people, whilst the red alert is in place, to stay inside their properties. There still might be hazards outside, uh, such as fallen power lines, and really just uh, wait for the advice from emergency services before they leave their safe reach of refuge. Do you know much about the situation with communications? Obviously, we've been trying to contact a few people on the ground and things are a bit patchy. What's the situation as you see it? Uh, from our perspective, we've maintained communications uh, with our incident control centres and regional operations centres through the night. Um, so we haven't had a lot of uh, issues with communications. And we also um, did receive information um, through people who work at the Roadhouse in Pardu uh, that those people are safe. So that's great news. What have you had to do? So in the lead up, we knew that this was coming for a few days. How did you get the message out? How did you make sure people heeded all those warnings? Yeah, so we've been putting out regular uh, community messaging for a week now, uh, both on the ground through local resources, making contact with remote uh, Indigenous communities and also mine sites and pastoral pastoralists through the regions, obviously through emergency WA and, and um, regular contact through media. And we believe that, um, you know, the, the community has heeded those warnings really well. And um, whilst we've had no great impact to Port, Had Port Headland, the community did prepare really well and they should be quite proud of that. But there still is a risk as this cyclone moves inland towards Telfer and other communities. So we're just asking people to still remain vigilant uh, until the risk passes. Is that the concern that people think, well, the cyclone's made landfall now, it's being downgraded, it should be fine for us to go out or to, to do things that they probably shouldn't? Yeah, well, it still is a severe tropical cyclone as it moves inland towards Telfer. And obviously, whilst we're still on red alert, we just tell people to stay inside and wait for the all clear message. There are, uh, or the, there is the potential for quite a lot of hazards in the area. It did obviously cross the coast as a category five. And um, you would have heard earlier that um, it broke one of the records in terms of sustained wind of 218 kilometres an hour for 10 minutes. So there is um, the likelihood of, of damage in areas and we just ask people just to be patient whilst we check before they go out uh, into the community. What is the expectation of possible damage in that area? Are there things that you usually would look out for? Yeah, well, there certainly will be damage um, up along the coastal areas where the crossing occurred, but largely the populated areas, um, like I said earlier, did uh, escape the brunt of the, of the eye as it crossed the coast. Um, we'll be checking on critical infrastructure and working really closely with main roads. Um, obviously, there's a lot of rainfall that's in the area and that's one of our priorities is certainly um, getting the road networks open as soon as possible. Um, but we'll only do that when it's safe to do so. Well, Peter Sutton, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all your work and uh, we'll keep across this as the day progresses. Thank you.
and he's been staying across the very latest movements of the cyclone. What do we know? Actually, just an update from the Bureau in the last five minutes, this hourly update in now with some changes to the warning area. So we are keeping a very close eye on this system. It came in strong as a Category 5 system. You're hearing there how strong those winds were. Gusts to 289 kilometres now recorded before that bit of equipment uh, stopped reporting. Now, we're seeing plenty of falls with this system and you can see a very clear uh, tropical cyclone eye still being picked up on the radar. Now, this system is continuing to march east and it will continue to weaken through the day, but this latest update maintains it at Category 3 strength, though the winds are starting to back off. Don't think that that makes it safe, though. Still gusts to 205 kilometres an hour. So the change now from Bidjidanga to Wallal Downs, the area there no longer under cyclone warning. So we'll have the updates in the maps very shortly. It's only just come in. We're going to see this, though, getting all the way through into the west of the Territory, bringing with it some big falls. Flood watches are current too. I was able to speak with Dean Narimore at the Bureau of Meteorology last hour for the very latest. This is what they're thinking. Overnight we saw it cross between 1am and 2am on Eastern Standard Time uh, as a Category 5 system and a bit earlier than that we saw one of our observation stations at Badoot Island well offshore. They gusted to 289 kilometres an hour before their observation stopped working but sustained winds were in excess of 200 kilometres an hour. So that means twice the speed of most uh, legal limits on freeways being sustained with gusts up to 289 kilometres an hour. So a very intense and dangerous system but still category three gusting 150 or so near the core and continuing to move inland telfer on alert uh, cyclone warnings continuing across large parts of inland wa uh, and telfer is probably the next um, town under the influence in this afternoon